Hello and welcome. My name is Emmanuel and I built this hacking torch about a year ago. Now in this video, I'm going to be giving you a quick rundown of my experience using a hacking torch as my daily driver. What are the problems? What are some things I have loved? And my general observations. Let's begin. <laughs> And welcome back guys. Now, if you are new here, welcome. Hope you enjoyed here. Do consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon so you don't miss any new videos. And if you are returning, well, welcome back, have a seat. Let's get into it. Now, about a year ago, like I said in the beginning of this video, I actually built this hacking Tosh primarily to edit videos. And before we get into this video, don't forget to go check out the video where I actually built this hacking touch to sort of understand my process and everything. But in case you are not going to go to that one or you want a quick primer, the specifications for this one are as follows. So it has an Intel Core i7-6700 non-K version. It has 32 gigabytes of RAM, an AMD Radeon RX 580 graphics card, four SSDs. So one is my primary Windows one, uh, 256 gigs SATA SSD. SSD. The second one is my Macintosh main uh, SSD, uh, SATA also 256 gigs also. The third one is my scratch drive, which is a 512 gig SATA SSD. And the fourth one is a NVMe SSD drive for my edit drive. So that one is like super fast. So that's basically the config that I have behind me here. Now, like I said, I actually use this rig here for video editing in the past year. And it is a pleasure to say that it has been amazing uh, editing video on this rig. Now, 4K video, it handles perfectly fine, even from my Sony camera, which can be a little demanding. So I found out that when I added the NVMe drive, that really helped because that solved the bottleneck of uh, speed when it comes to reading from the disc. Also, another thing is when editing 4K, I actually found that I, I could edit multiple streams of 4Ks in multi-cam with no problems whatsoever. So when it comes to editing, this rig here has been more than powerful. Now, while it is capable of gaming, I rarely did game on it. I mean, I have Windows and I can always boot into it to play the odd game like No Man's Sky sometimes. But more realistically though, I really didn't game that much and it's Mac OS as well, which not a lot of games that are on my Steam are available on Mac OS. So not much gaming done here, but I did again do a lot of video editing. So if you're a video editor, even for a sort of oldish processor such as the i7, 6700 non-k again it has been wonderful really for all the stuff i could do and even the new features with mac os catalina such as sidecar where you can use both your your ipad as a second monitor works here as well flawlessly so that has been nice so when it comes to performance overall in the past year i would say i've had really no problems whatsoever now, where I have actually had problems is in when I actually upgraded from Mojave to Catalina. So basically, when I ran the update, my N900 TP Link uh, card or Wi Fi card stopped working. I could not even recognize it. So that is something to pay into account. I mean, it didn't really affect me much because I actually use Ethernet for Internet. But if I'm betting if I actually needed to use Wi Fi, uh, I would have been screwed. So that's something that didn't work from the update from Mojave to Catalina. Another thing that also stopped working, though this ha really had nothing to do with software, is RAM. So like I said, I had 32 gigabytes of RAM to start, but one day all of a sudden I booted the computer, it beeped four, three, four, five times, I am not so sure. And my half of my RAM just wouldn't be recognized. I don't know what is up with that. And even when I booted into Windows as well, same issue, I only have 16 gigabytes of RAM, which I guess is not a Mac OS or hacking touch specific thing in this case. Perhaps it's my motherboard, perhaps it's the RAM. But then the funny thing is when I actually swap the RAM from different slots, it will recognize different RAM on different slots. But well, I, I think maybe it's a motherboard problem but yes, that has also been another problem that I have encountered. And because I do a lot of video editing, when I'm actually editing video, I sort of have to be careful with uh, opening Google Chrome because it can just swallow all the memory sometimes. So I have run out of memory a couple of times where you know it gives me a notification that swap memory is full. So I guess I need more RAM, but I've just not gotten to purchasing more RAM. Something that has actually really, really surprised me 
uh, is the fact that it's been very stable, you know, apart from, you know, even when I update from one version of the OS to another version of the OS, it goes relatively smooth and I rarely ever have any ECOPS provided I've updated the text that I have to update. So for someone who has been using a hacking touch for one year, I think the only thing that pains me is the fact that it's a desktop and it's stuck on my desk if it were like a laptop where i could actually carry it around i think that would have been wonderful because my work has become more mobile these days and you know i'm really crippled by just having to come home but when i do come home though i have to admit uh this rig handles almost everything i throw at it and even editing like black magic uh, uh raw uh, video files on it or prores on it is super smooth as well so which has been great uh, editing, I, I switched to Final Cut because of uh, the hacking touch here, and I just enjoy using uh, Final Cut on this as well. So if you are someone who is actually wondering about, you know, uh, switching, building a hacking touch of your own because you want to do for a run Final Cut, you want to edit videos, or you want to get an Apple device for cheap, I highly recommend a hacking touch as you can see here there's been really any problems all the configuration problems i had before it was easy to fix when i found you know different forum links and everything if you check out my original video you actually see some links i've put there and how to solve your usb problems how to solve your you know configuration problems and all that and i would say it's the best time to build a hacking touch right now where you know you can get a performance for like a you know significantly lesser price Anyways, that's basically been it for this video. I hope you enjoy my one year later on my hacking tosh. Uh, do you have a hacking tosh? Are you thinking of building a hacking tosh? Uh, what questions do you have? Do leave them for me in the comment section down there below. And again, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you enjoy what I do here. Click on the notification bell icon so you don't miss any new videos. And like this video, you know, YouTube, uh, you know, enjoys those algorithms. Uh, the YouTube algorithm enjoys, you know, uh, uh, engagement. So do leave a comment as well if you liked what I did here. And I shall catch you in the next one. Don't forget to remain awesome. Bye.